good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as mentioned, I'm Ray Cashano. So, uh, okay, so let's start. Well, uh, first, uh, as I've introduced myself, and also, uh, as mentioned, uh, I've been working with uh, PHP, so ready your pitchforks. Then, <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, what is task? What is it ask you? So, basically, what what I'll do now is just will I'll just tell a story. So, for my story, so to explain this one, don't take the analogy too seriously. So, there, if there's any flaws or uh, it doesn't make sense, just disregard that. Just just to to show the difference uh, on how uh, I should explain my presentation. So, here we go. So first, uh, instead of uh, uh, providing uh, directly um, some description on what is a task queue instead of uh, getting the worded worded description from Wikipedia. Uh, I'll show you a different uh, different workflow first. For first, for the traditional way, how we develop our applications. So here. So imagine. Uh, imagine this a uh, an Amazon uh, or or a store, just just a store. So, a long long time ago, a person walks into a store. Then, what would be the normal process? Uh, the the client or the customer uh, looks for an item, tells it to the uh, sales clerk. The clerk goes to the, to the storeroom, gets the item, and accepts payment. Then gives the item back to the to the customer, so that's how it works. But what if, imagine if this is in Amazon or a manual edition of Amazon. So, in here, uh, so the customer then walks in again to the uh, the customer walks to the store. Then the clerk checks for the record for the customer information. If the if the re customer record is not yet there, he will just uh, input it. Record it first. Then, clerk, the clerk's job then is to search the item for itself. Now, once he found the info, the item itself, he will go back to the. Uh, since we're emulating uh, an Amazon style, uh, he then looks for the uh, item information first. Then looks for the uh, who, who's the possible seller of this one. Sends a snail mail, so we'll, we'll just send uh, sends a notification there. Now, after a while, so the mail goes into transit, then it finally reaches the uh, the seller itself. So, in here, so so outside the store, the seller, the actual seller, will get the item from his warehouse, which is not co-located with the store, and then ships it. So all the whole process there, so after a while, item finally arrived. Then what would, what would the next one? So, so the clerk give it, then receives the item and then finally give it to, give it, gives it to the customer. Now, about that workflow, as you can see, as you can see uh, the, the requests are queuing up way back, way back on the uh, uh, all the requests are queuing up for, for the uh, sales clerk. So if we translate it in, this into application, so uh, imagine the, uh, where the user uh, or the, cost, the sales clerk checks the records, it's the database. Then there's the third party API where that, that's where the information uh, or the item itself is located. So it's not collocated with the store. Then we don't know what happens on that particular part, we're just concerned if, uh, if the item gets delivered. So as you can see, there's a problem in here that uh, we have the customer itself has to wait for the item for the whole process. So that's how the traditional way. Now, imagine if we're going to do it in a, dis in a distributed way, so on a uh, task-based queue. So in here, as you can see, in an alternate universe, if the user walks, uh, walks in, uh, so user walks in, asks for the item, then, uh, so, so the, front, the front guy here, 
Uh, this guy, uh, yeah, here. This guy here, we'll, we'll call him as the front desk. So he, he accepts anything, uh, incoming, customers, items, everything. So it's the, uh, uh, everything comes from outside the store. So as you can see in the image itself, the request looks like it's okay. But we have, uh, we're just telling the customer that we have accepted his request and, for pro and it could be for processing. So that's different from, uh, uh, from the traditional way and how we interpret it from, from this way. Uh, this means that the customer itself can do anything, anything he wants after the, uh, he, he, gets, uh, he gets the uh, acceptance from the uh, front desk. Now, once the, the customer uh, gets the, the accepted response, or it's, it's now in processing. Now, as you can see, a uh, customer can do whatever it wants. He, de he then decides to go home because we already have his uh, customer information. We, we know uh, when to notify him, wh wh where to deliver the item itself. Now, as you can see, there's, there's a big guy here in the middle. Uh, we may call him as the postman or the mailman or the messenger. Well, his, his job is only to uh, run around inside the store, passing the messages itself. So, so if we, uh, so we, can, we can call him an intern, so that's his job. He just, uh, yeah, pass around the messages. Then, once, uh, after that, he, since he already received the item, it's, uh, the, uh, the order itself, he then goes to the uh, the the inter itself or the mailman. He tells that please can you bring this uh, message or this request to the uh, to the next section, which what we which, which what will we call the um, in here. This is the uh, record section. This is the, this is the guys, this, their job is only to select uh, or get all the item information or the customer information, record it. So as you can see from here on this diagram, we have already isolated the task from just instead of one person doing all, all of it. So we have delegated that it to another person. So in here, so, so we have bit A. Uh, the communication person, person, sorry, this guy at the bottom, uh, his only job is to uh, send the request. For example, if the cost, the uh, item that was rec being requested is found somewhere, example for Jupiter or something, uh, he then sends the request itself. Then same thing. He will, the, uh, the store seller or the seller itself will send an accepted request. So this guy here at the bottom will not have to wait for the item here. So same thing, accepted, uh, it just, it just uh, accepts the uh, request and then it will be in processing for the seller itself. So we don't have, there's no uh, request uh, queuing here. Now, again, uh, item finally arrived. So in here, so if this is the item that's being ordered, it finally arrived in the front desk itself. So it's not going to the, uh, to the communications team because the communications team's job is only to communicate with the other store sellers. So once the item finally arrived, the front desk um, uh, accepts it and then tells again the messenger or our intern to bring this to our dispatcher team. So the dispatcher team's job is only uh, to deliver the item itself to the seller. So finally, the, fi the item has been, has been delivered to the customer. So, 
So, based on the description on the uh, diagram there, you may wonder that uh, it's quite an unfair uh, comparison because we're only dealing with one customer. So, we, we can't see the, the actual queuing of the customers on the front desk. So, if we translate it here, as you can see, we can, mul we can then provide multiple workers or for the front desk, for the, for the records team, for the communications team, and for the dispatcher team or the delivery team. So that's how this, this is one way to scale the application using the distributed task queue. But then, how can you identify, uh, can you identify what would be the task queue here? So from this diagram, the task queue is the whole process here. So this means that the task queue is, is that task queue itself is the one uh, that trans uh, is the form of trans transfer of the messages pass pass being the uh, to, sorry onto the user. So from here. This, this particular guy here in the middle is the message broker. He's the one who sends and receives the uh, messages within the store. This guy, he this guy here. And this particular box is here. This is called the uh, mailbox. So that's, that's what we call the queue. So this is where we put all the messages. And then the workers here. This guy is, these guys here, they are the ones who are the one uh, who takes the messages so that they could work on it. Now, translating to application level, uh, let's just say that at the front here, we could, we could have a, an Nginx web server or the load balancer application. They're the ones, the front desk are the ones that accept the request. So they're not actually the workers in, uh, here, but uh, uh, could be the gatekeepers, or we could call them the gatekeepers, or the web application instances. Then here, on the middle, is the message broker. It's the one uh, that passes the messages. And then the workers. And as you can see here in the uh, outside of the store, it would be our third party API. So that's how we distribute, sorry, that's how we distribute the, the messages itself. Now, for my, uh, for my demo, to demo that particular application, uh, this was uh, inspired by the Instagram ar architecture, which was presented by Rick Branson. Uh, at PyCon 2013. So he was an infrastructure engineer at Instagram. And second, uh, of course, uh, for this presentation also, I'll be just using one instance. We'll be using cloud uh, AWS instance for this one. So instead of simulating uh, this, uh, this work, this uh, architecture, so the, uh, 15 uh, servers in here, we'll just simulate it into one server with several workers, uh, several workers in one server or one instance. And of course, we're using an AWS Ubuntu since this is the most supported uh, uh, distro by RabbitMQ, which will be our message broker. Now, for the technologies used, uh, I'll just, uh, I'll just hi highlight it here. First is the salary. This is the uh, uh, distributed task queue that we'll be using uh, for this application. And that's the Flask micro framework. And then there's the RabbitMQ. So this this salary, this Flask, this Rabbit MQ, then of course Python, engine engine as our server, and we'll store our, our record at our database. Now for the demo, uh, we will be using uh, Chica API. 
So after this, uh, after we create the application itself, the server itself, you can try it on your phone if you're using a smart mo smart SIM. Sorry, we can uh, we can use Globe for this one. And yeah, so let's try to start with the uh, demo itself. What I'm going to do now. So what I'm going to do now is to create a new Amazon instance. So in here, so we'll just go to Amazon EC2 instance. So we're just uh, an EC2 instance. Uh, for those who don't know, it's just uh, it's technically just a server. So in the old days, it's just we're just buying a. Uh, a computer itself that just hosted on the cloud or on the internet. So we'll, so we'll just go to our running instances. We'll just shut down our current running so that it won't. So just to prove that we are using a new instance. Okay, so once it got terminated, we'll, let's launch one. Then browse here. So down here. There. So let's select the Ubuntu. Just skip that one, skip, skip. Okay, so we'll just add, add a rule here that to allow HTTP to come through because the request will be coming from Chica itself. Then we'll launch, the, launch that one. So let's create a new key pair. So by 17. Then we launch the instance. So let it brew for a while. So once uh, in here, we have downloaded the key pair itself. So let's just copy it from the downloads, uh, from the downloads directory. Now let's check the if the instance is already running. So it's already running. So what we'll go, we're going to do is we're going to connect to this server. Let's copy this one. Okay, so now we're connected to our server. Next thing, what we're going to do is uh, we'll go to the GitHub, to the application itself. Go to the, so it's the location here. Uh, well, I'll send it later. So go to the install.sh. Just copy all the way down here. So in here, if you're familiar with, uh, you can actually automate this one. If, you're, if you have attended the Ansible presentation before, that would be a good start. But for, you could also put it in the cloud formation if you want. So just for this presentation, Okay, so the client ID, what we need now would be the Chica client ID, the secret key, and the shortcode itself. So we're, next thing we'll do is we'll have to log into the uh, Chica API. So this will be our uh, SMS gateway. Um, so what we are going to do is let's go to the API settings itself, copy this client ID. So that's how we integrate with Chica. Paste it here. Oops. 
then the secret key let's just generate uh, generate another one the lastly would be the access number the access number is this one so it's 2929070 the access number is the one that we text to uh, to our service so it's for example mcdonald's space on if you want to register to mcdonald's we text mcdonald's space on to 2929070 so in here our keyword would be board b o r d um did yes. you increase the size we can ah, see thank you about that one increase more still more okay so it's the Still no. It's not readable. Let's type on I guess we're just going to do look at the uh, GitHub. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Sorry. So. For the GitHub itself, this is the actual, uh, so it's just the installation script. What we're doing is just to set to replace this one, the client ID, the secret key, and the short code. So, so if we can, what we can do is just uh, so that we, can, we don't have to manually put it in the uh, server itself, we can put it in the uh, cloud formation script. You can create a cloud formation script so we don't have to do that, that one we're paste, copy pasting. So, yeah. So the, uh, as mentioned, the client, Chica client ID will get this it one. He will get that one here. The secret key here. We we already already got that one here, and then the short code. Now, uh, so once we have pasted this uh, this information, let's run the uh, script itself. So what's going to do is download the uh, the packages and the libraries, the pip installation, the celery, the flask, and other uh, libraries needed for the application itself. So we'll go back to our presentation first. Okay, so. The demo that I'm going to create, so this is how the workflow for, uh, works. Uh, a user text a certain number, uh, so it's board space uh, on, so for, uh, so for example, or McDonald's space on, Jalbi space on. Chica then receives it, then based on the a number that uh, it has received, or the, two nine, uh, the access number, which is 2929070, on what we have placed on the oh so we forgot that one uh, let's go back here we need to put the actual uh, server here so the dns provided by amazon 
because it's pointing to the old server. So we'll have just to, we'll have to edit this one. We just edit this out up to the notification. And same thing here. So that uh, Chica can ad identify which uh, endpoint it should be triggering. So once it's saved, okay. I'll just, I'll just briefly explain the flow. Okay, so the user texts Chica, then Chica receives it, identifies the access number, sends it to our server, then on, the, on our server, on our worker, uh, he then receives that, he then recognizes the keyword itself. So for example, uh, or the endpoint itself. So Chica is triggering the message endpoint. It's a, uh, we do have another endpoint which is called notification. So if that particular uh, endpoint was triggered, he will then tell RabbitMQ to send this message to the message queue. So this will be our workers. So in here, as you can see, there are two uh, message worker because on the demo itself, we're going to uh, the, uh, we're go I'm going to show you how the distribution of the message itself being passed within two worker workers. Now, once the uh, it has been processed, uh, the message job is to check the keyword itself. So, if it finds the keyword board, he will then tell RabbitMQ to send it to the board queue. So this, so we can put, put several queues in here, like board, McDonald's, Jollibee, or anything. So once the, uh, depending on the behavior of that application, uh, the board, uh, the, the worker itself will then parse the message and provide the particular response. So for example, for board space on, we want to send the user, uh, thank you for registering to board. So once we have uh, accepted that particular message, but this particular uh, worker itself is the no, the, not the one who's going to send the message itself. He's just constructing the message. So if there are other paths here, like saving the number, we could do it here. So once the message is construct, constructed, he will let, tell, tell again uh, RabbitMQ to put it to the outbound queue. So the outbound queue's job is to tell Chica that we have a message to be sent to the user. So same thing. Based, uh, based on the uh, diagram that we have provided before, Chica will then respond that uh, it's, we have accepted the message. And then, since the same thing here, Chica will then send the message to the user, to the mobile number. And then we'll, uh, Chica will then notify us that we have, if the message is uh, successfully sent via the notification endpoint. So on that notification endpoint, that, that would be the, uh, uh, that his job is just to record the, uh, the status of the message that, that Chica sends, maybe for billing or logging purposes. So based on that workflow, so I think the installation is complete. Let's connect to, let's connect again. So just to make sure Let's restart the service. Let's restart the, Let's restart the uh, services first. Okay, so once restarted, what we're going to do is to simulate the five workers. Uh, this guy is here, the board queue, the two message queues, and the notification queue, and then the outbound queue. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, okay. Let's close that one. Connect to our server first. Oops. Then 
Then we'll split the so we could show the other workers. Let's connect to the uh, then we will we'll then invoke our workers so we'll just uh, go inside for our let's just go inside to, the, to our environment environment first so it would be source run SMS Okay, so once it's running, we'll just go back to our GitHub page because we have identified here how to start our workers. So first would be our notification worker. Then our two message workers. Then our keyword, so it's this the one that the user texts. And then our outbound, this is the one that uh, communicates with Chica, that if we have an outbound message to be sent to the user. So to simulate that one, uh, we have uh, created some payloads for Chica to simulate the uh, the request in incoming, the incoming request from Chica. So what we'll do first, we'll do a notification request. Uh, this script will accept the host name itself. So take note that this, since this is a notification request, it will go to this uh, particular worker. So this worker will then uh, acknowledge the uh, uh, message itself or the request itself then we'll have to wait uh, what we what I've did to, just for this demo we'll have to wait three seconds to simulate the asynchronous request so as you can see once we requested it what this one we have an accepted now here we have uh, received the accepted request immediately but the processing would be around uh, after three seconds, it, the request itself will be processed. So let's try that again. So wait three seconds. So there you go. So that's an asynchronous example. Now for the message, since we have two workers, what's going to do is we're, we'll just uh, send a request and currently uh, we are doing a round robin uh, uh, transfer of the message. So if we're we'll just change this one. As you can see, it goes through here. Then uh, since the request, like the message itself, uh, uh, we're sending it to the uh, to the board queue or the keyword queue. So it's like someone text board space on. This worker here accepts it. Then once he uh, identifies that the keyword is board, he will send it to the board. And then once it has been received here, he will then uh, construct the message and send it to the outbound queue. So as you can see, this is the response coming from Chica. So it says that it's uh, that the ID we have used is already used because we're just uh, the ID here on the demo. We're just uh, reusing it. We're just hard code. It's just in hard a hard coded uh, demo. Now to simulate the round robin request here, as you can see, it goes here. Then let's send another one. Goes back here. So. So for, this demo, so for this demo, that's how the request 
uh, or the workflow for the distributed task queue works. We're going back to the presentation. So if you want to test it, to validate it, you can text space board, uh, board space on to 29290 on our newly created server. Then for sources, uh, there's uh, the Python or uh, .org uh, presentation and the blog from the Inst how Instagram feeds and also the Rabbit MQ get started. This is a good resource uh, to know more about the distrib distributed task queue. Then thank you. Uh, I'm Rai Kishano, and hopefully you have learned something from my presentation. Thank you.